This is a quick Fortnite optimization guide that will boost your FPS and lower input delay. I'll walk you through the newest performance option, the most optimal Fortnite settings, must use Windows optimizations and GPU optimizations, and I'll even showcase some easy BIOS tweaks that you all need to be using right now. By the way, if you haven't already, please use someone's creator code. It doesn't have to be mine, but if it is, I really would appreciate it. To start off, when installing the latest Fortnite update, double check that it's being installed on your M.2 SSD drive. In 2025, there's no reason to have a competitive game installed on a slow, outdated hard drive. While playing this season, you'll likely encounter performance issues for at least the first week. And don't worry, this is completely normal. It's because your graphics card has to recompile all the new shaders that the game has recently added. This shader compilation process happens live when you do play, which causes those early season FPS drops stutters and even random spikes. To speed up this entire process, it's very important that you explore all the new areas in the game, so make sure to discover all of those greyed out areas. The sooner you do this, the faster your system will compile the shaders. As a bonus, some players have said that increasing their shader cache size to 10GB up from the default driver which is 4GB has actually helped them a ton. Now that we've gone over why Fortnite runs so poorly at the start of every season, you want to make sure that the game itself is fully optimised, especially with that new DirectX 12 performance mode setting. Before using it though, make sure to switch to DirectX 12 and in the settings set all of these to low. Since performance mode DX12 is built on DX12, having the right settings applied under DirectX 12 is very important for getting the most FPS. If you have a modern computer with at least a multi-core CPU, using the DirectX 12 updated performance mode is going to run way better than ever before. Even if it feels a little laggy at first, just please give it a few matches. And if you get any issues like crashes, you need to make sure you're using the latest Nvidia or AMD drivers too. I know for a lot of people out there, including the pros, you are all happy using the DirectX 11 performance mode. But now that Epic Games has combined all the benefits of DirectX 12 and the graphics of performance mode together, in my opinion, there's no reason you should not be using this new setting with modern hardware, especially if if you've got a Ryzen CPU, this will be a game changer. Alongside using that new rendering mode, you should also pair it up with low meshes to get even more FPS with the simpler lower poly builds, which by the way still have better break animations which is good in box fights. And while we're talking about input delay, full screen mode still gives the lowest delay, as proven by Nvidia. But if you're like Peterbot and you prefer windowed mode full screen for its easier alt tabbing, that's totally fine, just make sure to enable this Windows setting so you get the same low latency as full screen. For resolution, most players tend to stick with 1920x1080 as that's what they use on LAN events, but if you are aiming for more FPS, you may want to consider using a stretched resolution. Not only does this boost your FPS, but it can make the player models appear larger, which as you can imagine gives you an advantage in aiming. Peterbot in fact has used 1720x1080 in the past, so I would recommend that resolution if you're looking for one. Oh, and by the way, I do have a tutorial of all the stretch resolution methods that I will link in the description below. As for vSync, you want to turn this off as it's essential for reducing input delay and boosting FPS. For frame rate limit, you'll notice that some pros play with unlimited FPS, while others cap it at 240 FPS. The best approach here is to cap it to whatever your highest refresh rate amount is. For most people, that's 240 FPS. What this will do is it'll make your frame rate more consistent than it would otherwise be on unlimited. In the graphics section, while none of these settings right here do affect performance, the graphics quality settings definitely do. Lowering the 3D resolution can provide a significant FPS boost, but do be aware that the game's visual quality will decrease as you lower it. For view distance, most players do leave this on low to maximize FPS, but for the very small FPS difference, a lot of pros tend to increase this, as it gives you a huge advantage of being able to see loot at a farther distance. As for textures, I recommend recommend using this on low as this will reduce the graphical fidelity, in turn boosting your FPS. In the advanced settings, if you do have an Nvidia GPU, you will see the Nvidia Reflex setting. What this does is it reduces input latency by ensuring your system is ready to render each frame immediately. From my research, most high-end systems tend to use on plus boost, most medium-end systems just use on, and most low-end systems just turn this off as they get FPS stuttering. Then just below Reflex, you'll see performance 
performance stats which I highly recommend you disable as you don't want all your information getting sent to Epic Games which could cause a micro stutter. Oh after that if you head into the game settings and scroll down a little there's a few tweaks you can make to further improve your FPS. Just disable these four replay options if you do not use them. Now let's move on to some basic and advanced Windows optimizations. Starting off with a system restore point. Even though I doubt you'll need it it's better to be safer than sorry. For most people around 10 gigabytes should be more than enough. After that it'll create one in case you do need to roll back for any reason. From there open up the run box and type in system properties performance.exe and this will open up the visual effects tab. If you click on adjust for best performance you'll notice it unchecks all the set ends but what we need to do is tick these five essential ones to get the basic functionality from Windows. It's just more stripped down without the animations and stuff like that. After that a thing you can do is head into the task manager and look in performance. To your surprise the uptime may be very very high like some of these examples are on screen like some are just ridiculous and the reason it's so high is because of a fast start feature in Windows which you can disable without it being permanent in the settings. All you have to do is hold shift then press the shutdown in the start menu and that right there will turn it from being a high uptime to being on zero. It'll basically reset it and I like to do this every now and then. Next you want to go into gaming under game bar. Make sure this is disabled. Captures 2. I like to go ahead and turn this off and we've got game mode. This is something I really like and I do use now these days as I feel like it does make my frame rate more stable. From there below if you go into graphics if you see this setting called hardware accelerated GPU scheduling you want to turn it on to reduce system latency and improve performance. Now you can head into the settings into privacy and security, windows security, device security. Under core isolation details you will find memory integrity which I like to disable. Now yes this is a security feature however it is very CPU heavy so if you do disable it you will get more FPS. However if you are paranoid you can just keep it on if you like. If you're careful about what you download you should be fine but at least while gaming you should have this off. Also inside threat protection I like to go ahead and disable periodic scanning as this can actually occur when you're gaming and as you can imagine that can cause stutters. It's something you should be scanning manually not automatically. After that I go into general and I deselect all of these and then I like to disable this one right here. Inside the app section under installed apps you want to go through all of these and uninstall any that you don't use. So for example Microsoft OneDrive I do not use that so it will be getting uninstalled. However don't go too crazy with this you only want to uninstall something that you know what it does. Like when it comes to these files right here the visual C++ um, you definitely don't want to get rid of these as they'll have some sort of purpose with some software. Furthermore if you do use an app but you don't want it running in the background you can click on the three dots there go into advanced options and then you can basically stop this from running in the background by clicking on never and this will also lower your overall process count. Oh another thing in apps if you go into startup you can also go through this and turn off apps that you don't want starting with windows. Again don't go crazy as for some stuff you should leave this on. Next in system head into notifications. I recommend the do not disturb setting to prevent any distractions. You can then deselect all of these three settings. Next inside the windows updates I do actually recommend keeping windows semi up to date but you need to do it when you want to. Don't let this automatically do it for you. That's why I like to pause my updates. I like to unselect this. I like to then go into advanced options. Have all of these unselected then go into delivery optimization and uncheck this one right here. Then go into power. For most people they keep this option on balanced as it keeps your CPU clock speed at a normal base rate and it is the best of both worlds really. However you can go into the CMD and paste in this command right here which will create a ultimate power plan. To enable that you need to go into the edit power plan settings where you can actually select it. I only recommend the use of this power plan if you are gaming. If you're not gaming you should use balanced. Moving on you want to right click on your desktop go under show more options and click the Nvidia control panel. Once opened head into your manage 3D settings and I'm going to list off all the settings I've been using for best performance which I've been enjoying recently. Image scale you want off, ambient occlusion off, you want all these anti-aliasing settings off. Same with the background application, you want that off. CUDA GPUs, I leave us on all with the driver default as well. DSR factors, you want that off. When it comes to low latency mode, and um, this essentially removes the rendering queue between the CPU and GPU, which in turn removes one latency step from your mouse clicking to it reaching your display, basically resulting in much lower system latency if you do have this setting turned on or either on ultra. Now some people might find 
find that they get FPS drops on Ultra, so if that's the case, you either want it on or off, but for most people, on is pretty much the best set, and it's something you basically need to test for yourselves. Max frame rate, I keep off. Monitor technology, you will only see this setting if you do have G-Sync enabled on your monitor. Open GL, I keep on auto, along with auto select. As for power management mode, I've actually been preferring the maximum performance, even though I did used to have it on normal. This, again, is something you need to test on your own system to see which one's better. Preferred refresh rate, it's important you keep this on the highest one available, as you do want the max monitor refresh rate hertz. Shader cache size, this basically stores all the shaders in real time to use later. I recommend that you use 10 for this. Texture filtering, this is something you can experiment on your own PCs. Um, I've actually been enjoying this one being on. Uh, rather than the default being off. Uh, negative LD bias, I like this to be on allow. The quality, I like to be on high performance and trilinear, I like to have that on the default on. As for threaded optimization, I like to keep this on auto and I also leave all of these on default at the bottom. In addition, you can access hidden NVIDIA settings via the NVIDIA profile inspector, which is allowed and legal by the way. Many creators like Martos and myself have used this in the past and we've been sound. It's a great method if you do need extra FPS as you can further reduce the quality of your graphics. To find out what the best settings are, I recommend checking out this video I made earlier in the year. Moving on, I want to show you guys some really easy BIOS tweaks that can increase the speed of your RAM and boost your FPS, because when you bought your RAM, it's very possible that it's not running at the speed it should be. To get what you actually paid for, what you need to do is enable something called XMP, or the AMD equivalent. To double check, you need to restart your PC, you need to go into the BIOS, you can usually get in here by pressing the delete button or F2 on boot and then you need to turn on the XMP or the DOCP setting. Not only will this give you a nice performance boost but you'll also get the speeds that you paid for when you did buy your RAM and this is something that helps massively with FPS stability as well. And finally you guys should do a quick system check which I myself like to do every now and then just to make sure everything's running in the background properly. I usually run this command on screen and and then if I want a deeper scan, I'll use this command on screen. If either one of them commands finds any problems, you can then fix them with this command on screen. Then optionally, you can also run this one on screen. This one will scan and repair any broken system files. But remember, it's only worth doing this if you are having any sort of issues. And that right there was my quick full optimization guide. If it helped out, please drop a like subscribe and be sure to use someone's creator code in the item shop. Before you do go, feel free to check out any of my other videos on screen right now.